Welcome back to our next video. In this video, we will I will be showing you how to interpret IR, not IR, mass spectrum data. And so I won't be going through the process. I will just be showing you how to interpret the chart when you get it. All right. So this one is for a hydrocarbon. So first, they will tell you if it's a hydrocarbon, or ala alkane, alcohol. Esther. So they will give, they will tell you how to write or give us some ins. So for this one, it's a hydrocarbon. So there are three important peaks that they will that they can ask you to identify. All right, so the tallest peak. So over here, I identify base peak, molecular ion peak and M plus one peak. So on your mass spectrum, the tallest peak, that is your base peak. So your tallest peak, which is this one here, that is your base peak. And that is their most stable fragment. So the tallest speaks so each of these ions represent fragments of the molecule that has just went into the mass spectrum. So the tallest one that represents the most stable fragment, right? And we call it the base peak. The heaviest peak, so all of these numbers represents masses of the different fragments. So the heaviest peak, which is to the right, right? That's your molecular ion peak. So this one, the heaviest one, that's the molecular ion peak. Now this peak is the mass for your compound. So how this peak was, was formed is just by removing an electron from the molecule. So removing an electron, that will not affect the weight of your molecule. So whatever the molecular ion is, whatever the mass of the molecular ion is, that's also the mass of your compound. So when it comes to the last question down here, that says draw the structural formula of compound X. This mass here, that is the molecular mass of your compound. All right, so whatever the molecular ion mass is, that's also the molar mass for your compound. And some mass spectrum, not all of it, you might see right next to right next to the molecular ion peak, you might see a very short line, right? Right next to the molecular ion peak. You might see a short line. If you see that, that is your M plus one peak but you have to look for it next to the molecular ion peak, not next to the base peak or any other peaks, next to the molecular ion peak. That's your M plus one peak. So these are the three peaks you can be asked to identify from the chart, base peak, molecular ion peak, and the M plus one peak. M plus one is not on every mass spectrum because the M plus one, it represents carbon 13 isotope. All right, so not every mass spectrum that, that you get will have 
on M plus one peak. All right, so after you have identified your base peak, molecular ion peak, and if an M plus one peak is there, the next thing that you might be asked to identify or to draw are these fragments. So 15, 29, 43, 57, and 86. So you have to be able to do that. All right, so what I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you a simple formula, not really a formula, but something to work out where you can identify these structures easily and quickly. All right, so your molecular ion peak, right? So remember now, this is a hydrocarbon, consists of carbon and hydrogen only. So we have a compound made up of only carbon and hydrogen. So to know how much carbon is present, I want you to divide the molecular ion All right, so to get the amount of carbon atoms present, you simply divide the, the molecular ion mass by 12. So in this case, the molecular ion, that is 86. Divide it by 12. And that will give you Seven point one six. No, when you're doing this, whatever decimal you get, just ignore it. Do not write it. If it's seven point, if it's seven point nine, just ignore the, the decimal. All right. So we're not paying attention to the decimal. So eighty six over twelve. That is seven. Once you get that answer. I want you to subtract one from it. That will leave you with six, all right? So that is the amount of carbon atoms that is in our compound, six. So for a hydrocarbon, whatever the molecular ion mass is, divide it by 12. Just write the whole number, ignore the decimal and they are going to subtract one from the answer. Whatever answer you get after that, that's the amount of carbon atoms in your compound. So our compound has six carbon atoms. And if it's six, it means that it is hexane. So compound X is hexane. So where it says draw the structural formula of compound X, we can go ahead and do that. All right, now if it has six carbons, 12 sixes, all right. so let's do the molecular formula. So that would be C6. H14 for our alkane, so it's hexane. So 12 sixes, 72. 72 and 14, that would give 86, all right? And of course, you would put on your hydrogens. All right, next, how do we get these fragments? So again, it will be similar to calculating the molecular ion with a small exception. All right, so when you want the mass of this fragment, you just divide it by 12. So let's start with our base peak, 43. 
divided by 12. All right, so we get 3.6. All right, now for this one, you are not going to subtract, all right? But again, we are going to ignore the decimal, all right? So we're not using it. We're not rounding off either. As in, so we're not rounding up or down, just ignore the decimal. So 3.6, just see it as three carbons. So they get 3.1 or 3.9, just pay attention to the whole number. So our fragment of 43, it contains three carbon atoms. And that's it. Now it's a hydrocarbon, of course. So three carbons. Now remember, our original molecule, it has six carbons. So when this molecule fragments, all right, if it's exhale, it would cut there or break here. That means you should not have six hydrogens. So this would be it, all right? So do not surround all of the carbons with hydrogens. So if you have three carbons, you would have two, four, six, seven hydrogens. So this is C3, all right, we can show this. If it's an alkane, an alkane with three carbons, it would have eight hydrogens, all right? So if it was an alkane molecule with three carbons, it would have eight hydrogens. So all you have to do is, is put one less hydrogen. Right. So if it was an alkane, it would be C3H8. But with the fragment, it would have one less hydrogen. So it would be C3H7. Right. So that's the formula for your fragment, C3H7. You can check it, 12 trees, 36, 36 and seven, that is 43, all right? We can do it again with fragment 29. All right, 29. Twenty nine divided by twelve. That will give you two point something. So again, ignore the decimal. Say so it's just two. So this fragment it should have two carbons. Now if it was an alkane, it would be C two H six. So it should have one less hydrogen. So C two H five. Two twelve is twenty four. Twenty four and five. That's twenty nine. So C387, this fragment is a propyl fragment. C2H5, that is an ethyl fragment. So whenever you get a mass spectrum, once you see C2H, sorry, once you see 29, it's going to be an ethyl fragment. Once you see 43, that will be a propyl fragment. Once I see 15, that will be a methyl fragment. So 15, that is CH3, 29, CH3, CH2, that's ethyl. 43, CH3, CH2, CH2, that's propyl. And 57, it will be butyl so let's do 57 down here so it would be 57 divided by 12 
you will get 4.75, but again, just paying attention to the four. So this fragment should have four carbons. If it was an alkane, it would be C4, H10, hence it, the fragment is C4, H9. So you can quickly figure out the formula of these fragments. And it's simply by dividing by the mass of carbon. And right? so that would be it for this question. And say so just remember the tallest peak is the base peak. The one to the far end, that's the molecular iron peak. And if you have a small peak right next to the molecular iron, that is your M plus one peak. All right, so I'm going to do one now that is not an hydrocarbon. All right, so we have two mass spectra and both of them are for an alcohol, all right? Now, both of these are for the same alcohol. Well, the same molecular formula, all right? So if we compare both of them, all right? The fragments, both of them have 15, both of them have 17, This one does not have 29. This one has 29. This one has 31, but this one does not have 31. So when you have missing peaks, if you notice it, it is the same molecular ion, but they do not have the same fragments. Some of them are similar while others are missing. That means they are isomers, all right? So let us look now at actually join the fragments of these, all right? But first, let us figure out which alcohol we have. Now, when I did the hydrocarbon, I told you to divide by 12 and subtract one. Now, if it's not a hydrocarbon, all right, what you will do, all right, so we have an alcohol here whatever the molecular ion is. So as we know, the heaviest peak, that's the molecular ion peak. So in this case, it is 60. It's not a hydrocarbon, it's an alcohol. When, it's, when you get a compound with a functional group, I want you to subtract the functional group from the molecular ion. And right, so it's the mass, so it's the molecular minus the functional group. And when you get the answer, you are going to divide it by 12. All right, so the mass of the molecular ion here, that is 60. The functional group for alcohol is OH, oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 17. All right, so it's 60 minus 17. Now, even though we are working out the molecular ion, because it's not a hydrocarbon, you are going to treat working out the structure like how you would do a fragment, all right? So remember, 
It's an alcohol, so it has a hydrocarbon portion attached to an OH group. So this, this 17, that's the mass of your OH group, All right? So you would have a hydrocarbon portion attached to an OH group. If you should remove the OH group, what you, are, what you are left with is a fragment, all right? That is why you are going to treat the amount of carbons in the compound as a fragment. So 60 minus 17, we end up with 43. And remember from the previous video, I told you that 43 is a propyl group. So once you say 43, it is a propyl group. That means our alcohol is propanol. So 43, that is CH3, CH2, CH2. That is your propyl group, right? And then the OH add to it now brings it up to 60. So once you get a compound that is not a hydrocarbon, subtract the mass of the functional group from the total mass of the compound. Whatever you, whatever answer you get, just treat it like how you calculate the formula for the fragment, which is simply divided by 12 and ignore the decimal place. So 43 divided by 12, you will get three, All right? So that means we should have three carbons attached to the OH group. It is that simple. All right, so now we know we have propanol. What we don't know if it's one propanol or if it's two propanol. So when you get the one propanol now, right? That is now how you are going to piece together which fragment is which. All right, so let's get this out of the way. 43, once you see it, it's a propyl group. 15, that's a methyl group. All right, on any mass spectrum 15, that is CH3. Once you see 43, it's propyl. So that would be C3, H7. So over here, again, 15, that is a methyl group. 29, we know 29 is an ethyl group. All right, again, just do C2, H5. So anywhere you see 29, you know it's ethyl. You don't have to calculate it again. So after watching this video, you won't need to work out 43 because I know it's propyl, 15 is methyl, methyl is at the wrong place. Wherever you see 43, that is a propyl group. All right, so that means anything outside of the fifth, the methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, and so forth. Any mass outside of those means it as in the functional group or that element other than carbon and hydrogen. So the 17 and the 45 must have in your oxygen. Any fragment you get that is outside your alkyl groups must have been that specific element that made your compound not a hydrocarbon. In this case, oxygen. So the fragment that is 17, it must have been oxygen. Sorry, this wouldn't be 17, it should be six. Yeah, it is 17. All right, so 17 and 45, it must have been oxygen present. And over here, 17, 31, and 45 must have been oxygen present. So looking at this compound, we already know that 
the OH group that is 17. So this fragment here, that is due to the OH group. So we know that 17, that's the OH ion. 45, let us see how we can get 45. So how do we break it out again? The 45, it means oxygen is present. So what I wanted to do is subtract the mass for the OH, all right? The functional group. Just subtract the mass of your functional group or whichever element. So if it was a halo alkane like chlorine, you would subtract, you would subtract the mass of chlorine, bromine or whichever element. If it was a carboxylic acid, you subtract the, C, the, the mass for COOH. And if it was an ester, you would subtract the mass of two oxygen atoms, all right? So we're dealing with an alcohol, its fragment is 45, subtract the OH group, all right? Because we said it must have been OH. And once you do that, we're going to divide it by 12. Right, so 45 minus the mass of oxygen, that gives us 28. That means our alkyl portion, it must have been two carbon atoms. So 28 divided by 12, that's 2.3, but we are ignoring the decimal. So it should have two carbons. So looking at this, we can see that if we put our OH group here, and the fragment must have been two carbons, the molecule would have to fragment here. So that would be our portion. So 45, it would have been two carbons, an OH group. Right. Remember, do not put any hydrogen here. That would bring it up to 36 the molecule has to fragment. And so that would be the fragment here where it broke up. So if you do the maths, 12 and 12, that's 24, 24 and 4, 28, 28 and 16, that's 44 and 1, 45, all right? Now, let's look at this compound here. The 31 peak, 31, that is the one that is missing from this. So again, once it's outside of the alkyl masses, ethyl, methyl, propyl, and so forth, it means a group, a particular element or group is present. All right, so 31, Take away the OH fragment, that is 17, divided by 12. All right, so 31, take away 17, you end up with 14. So in 31, the mass of the hydrocarbon fragment or the alkyl fragment is 14. Divided by 12, you get to one point something, right? Ignore the decimal. So 31, it should only have been one carbon atom attached to an OH group. All right, so for the 31, the molecule would have to fragment here. All right, so last point to note, right? If you had gotten this, so this mass spectrum here, it fits this molecule here. So you could not draw two propanol. So let us say we ask you to draw the 
structure of the alcohol. So if you had done this for your alcohol, it would be incorrect. Reason being, and you can try it for yourself, just observe it. To get 31, right? It's an OH group with a carbon. So if you look at that, there's the molecule, this molecule, it would not fragment to give you an OH group and a single carbon atom. If you look at it, because if the OH breaks off, you would be left with the fragment that is 43. Or if it breaks here, that is how we had ended up with the 45 and the 15. So this compound, this mass spectrum here is for one propanol. You cannot get the, 30, the fragment for 31, you cannot get it for two propanol. So if it's not a hydrocarbon, or even to hydrocarbon, when I ask you the structure of the compound, ensure that the mass actually fits the structure, or it is you are able to get the fragment from the structure. So this mass spectrum here, it's one propanol, because you would not be able to get 31 from this if it fragments, all right? So remember, when we're doing these calculations, it's just with the molecular formula in mind, all right? The total is 60, and we work out these fragments, all right? But to get 31, this compound would not fragment to give, would not break up to give a fragment of 31, all right? But that's the least of the problem. The main issue is to be able to work out the structure of your fragments. And I've just shown you how to do that easily. So the hydrocarbon is simple. If it's not the hydrocarbon, it's easy, same way. All right. Your subtract your functional group from the mass of the compound or the fragment. And you can just see what we did here. All right, so that's it. The next video will be past papers. If you have any question, you can leave it in the comment section.